And finally, Maggie Duplessis and Marion Johnson Hurley get us underway. And there's a lot of Kiwis uh, in the stadium, Annie. They're going to give great support to the Ferns. I would estimate at least a third, and they're making as much noise as if it was a Kiwi sellout. <laughs> but it's great to have the atmosphere. They love their nipple. They appreciate the skill. So uh, it'll really lend to the atmosphere here. How are they going to find Van Dyke? They don't. They go to Tahina first of all, and a penalty against Illich. You've already seen that shot, Van Dyke really leaning into Chatfield, so she's got a good strong hold on the position to offer under the post, and it reaps uh, the dividends. So New Zealand on the board, first of all. Jessica Shin, the West Australian in the team, got a huge welcome. Australia so fast in progress for that circle, uh, starting off where they left in the first, using speed and quick hands. Anna Scarlett put out of play, Neil. Oh, somehow they got the rebound. Looked like it was going to be out of play. Better speed on the Kiwi ball down court. Wilson and Tim Clara Clark have done their homework in the last couple of days. Contact on Chatfield from behind on Van Dyke. Over here, wait for the whistle. And Tahuna to take the shot. Illich defending. Obstruction, goal defense, bow down or flat. Janine Illich was actually the most penalised in the first test. She approved 13 penalties, um, which is a fairly hefty total in what was a very heavily penalised match. Clark got it off. Good pressure over the first centre pass from her. Far more variety, too, in uh, the New Zealand approach to their circle and see the toughness in of Tahuna holding off Illich. And they're both out of play again. Good to see Van Dyke venturing out of the circle, giving a good, effective inlet to Tahuna. But it'll test out the uh, combination for the Australian defence. And, of course, they won't have had too much time together, but it'll really sort out their ability to switch and remember who's uh, guarding post. And contact against Clark. As the Australians battle to get it into the circle to get their first goal. Neil. Only three of these Australian starting seven played the second test against New Zealand in Palmerston North. They were Neil, Shin and Illich. And Shin and Illich weren't in the starting positions they have tonight. So it's a very changed lineup. I think if we can see that both teams are changing their lineups, it's also fair to extend that comment to say Australia is more effective. New Zealand's line has been more stable from the July series to now albeit they've made changes for this test. Australia has been really exploring the options all the way along the line. Well, a few of us tipped this. The penalty's going heavily against Australia in the second test after the uh, fuss made by New Zealand after the first. Penalty 7-2 against Australia in the opening moments. New Zealand putting a double pairing on that Avelino for the centre pass and it's pushing a wide, creeping out of her out of the equation. Instruction against Clark. Shin's open. They find her. And on to Cox. Well, the acting Australian captain taking it all in her stride. And it will be a test for her. I think she arrives to it beautifully, but she is in a position where she needs to keep uh, the Australian line settled and focused. And on attack, not sitting back, because this has been a good start from New Zealand. Well, that's interesting, because Illich and Tahuna were going a round or two only about a foot away. And Irene Van Dyke, as she always does, ends up taking the shot no more than about a metre from the post. Such is the access that uh, they managed to find for her. Great start from New Zealand. Great screen from Sinanil and it opens for her. Good vision from Jess Shin. And good execution and balance from Sinanil, who came on late in the match in the first test and shot well. And another call against Illich, contact... Uh, Sorry, and at the other end, just having another look at the balance of um, Sin and Neil. I was about to say, uh, as we watched that replay, that uh, Janine Illich is attracting a fair bit of whistle, but the turnover now with Australia. Cannot believe Irene Van Dyke missed that shot. She only missed one in the whole of the first test. Uh, chance for Australia to get back. A lovely pass from Avelino. That's why she's there. New Zealand also caught flat-footed. And 
Australia with the possession on the centre pass. Avellino. Oh, what a ball to Cox. And well kept in by Sinanil. Yeah, that was going to be a bit too much air by Shin. Had the Kiwi arms to get up to it. Contact goes against Nickel. Oh, it's a bun fight in there. Avelino under great pressure off the line but still manages to find the pass to Cox. How well did she read Catherine Cox? Well look, I'm very impressed with your forward line. Avelino under increased pressure. The Kiwis have done their homework in defending her and shutting her out but the others around her are lifting to the change in pattern. Six minutes gone, second test. And don't forget if New Zealand wins this one, the third will decide it in Melbourne, Saturday afternoon as Neil puts a nice move on the baseline. You see them putting so much focus on shutting down Avellino that they're not as cohesive back in the defensive circle where they normally can sit and run onto the play. They're chasing. Illich, it's good use of the width of the court. Great catch from Shin, and there's Neil. Long way out, doesn't mind from there. And she's a strong rebounder. Sin and Neil, only one miss... Uh, albeit she wasn't on for most of the match but just the one missed for a time on court in the first set contact against Scarlett Australia in the early stage is shooting at 70% to New Zealand's 86 Neil Cox is there but a good oh bad luck bad luck for Scarlett who held off her space very nicely great work from Scarlett that was set up too by New Zealand having three across the transverse line, giving the impression there was an, an Australian player three. Three in a row for Australia. And they were down 5-2 as well. So Clark. Oh. Beautiful ball to Tahuna. Timapara Clark has lifted. Uh, she was a little flat in the first test. But she's taking some command in the midcourt for New Zealand. And that was the problem. They really lacked the organiser, the general, in the absence of both Holling and Ro Robry. They were tested. Well placed ball for Van Dijk. And out it comes again. <laughs> it's a run rebound. I think she was expecting a call and she started flirting with the three seconds in. It was one of the rare occasions the whistle didn't go. And against Jolene Henry. Penalty count is starting to even up now. And Van Dyke is just four from six. Once again, Australia with a one-on-one -on -one in the circle because they're using Henry forward in tandem with both Nickel and Timapara Clark. Like a mini wall across the, the top of the goal third. Falls rather luckily to Timapara Clark. Off the no, clock. Oh, oh, gave it away. Oh, <laughs> and Sid O'Neill has uh, run into Anna Scarlett. Well, brilliantly read by Janine Let's Look at the turn of speed and she's kept it alive but Scarlett with eyes for the ball turns it back for New Zealand. Yeah. So Inspector Gadget to becomes in the Inspector General. She really needs to lift it to command and take control back there for Australia. Had to get it away urgently. Oh. Clark, almost a rolled ball. And against Tahuna off the ball. You're out of play. <laughs> Jody Tahuna. A lot of noise here. You're flat out here in the umpires. We can hear them because they're mics, but that's different for the players. Nice change on the angle for Australia. Avellino with great balance. Waits till the timing is right from Cox. Avellino gathers what was missed. And some good deception on the feed. Draws the line at the top of the circle, delivers it to the baseline. And Australia by two. 5.44 left in the first quarter. The shooting from both teams reflecting the pressure of the defence, 64% for Australia, 70% for New Zealand. Great start by the Ferns being uh, slightly undone by some looseness. A couple of turnovers, a couple of missed goals from Van Dijk. Gerard. This Monia Gerard's fourth test and she was 24 yesterday. Her debut, though, against New Zealand, and she'll be chomping at the bit to get out there in this game. Australian ball, Scarlett can't believe it. Neil. Nothing but 
net and a three-goal lead with a centre pass to come. Break in free pass. 1990 was the last time Australia played New Zealand in Perth. That was a two-goal win to Australia. 44 to 42. Van Dyke, strong hands, took it away from Chatfield. Not afraid to do some work out of the circle. Tahuna. And Tahuna lifting and taking some control then. She ran the double play with Wilson and it just takes the attention away from Van Dyke, which ultimately will free Van Dyke. Wilson. Got it to Van Dyke. Clark. Just my imagination, Annie, or is Van Dyke doing a lot more out of the circle? Yeah, she is on a few leads out of the circle, which reflects the increased workload from Tahuna. It's actually, uh, Tahuna has had as many attempts to post as Van Dyke. Well, keeper can't move away if Tahuna's in a back. But anyway, goal's good. And Australia, a little untidy. Neil. Back up from Shin, and nicely through to Cox. And a little hesitant over the shot that time. Good hold from Scarlett. Scarlett is doing a good job. She's putting some hesitation into Catherine's release of the shot. She's uh, very tall, at least Catherine's type, but a great reach over. And ten apiece. Kiwis have scored the last three. Here comes their run. Ooh, nearly a held ball there. And yeah, contact goes against Clark. Well, for a certain statistician, we might have jumped onto the court if that hadn't been given. <laughs> again forcing the way through two players committed in the other direction i think they're underestimating the reach of anna scarlett had no trouble pulling that one in the pass to the pocket was no good i have to say scarlett a vast improvement on uh, the output that davu had uh, in the first test what a great take <laughs> oh, she is some athlete van dyke oh the pressure's on and a footwork call comes out well i think she steps more than she's called for but uh, it's also that she loves to step on and around in taking the shot, so she's always going to be a little off balance. And I think the defensive style of Scarlett is really troubling Cox. And she's certainly more agile, attacking more ball, and she's being very effective over the shot and on the high ball. Oh, bad luck. Uh, way over the head of Neil. That didn't need to be that high with a defender on the ground. And it's... Australia with four more attempts, but with just one goal the lead. Well, Wilson missed the high ball to Van Dijk, who was open to the post. Back, back, take it back, take it back. Australia shooting percentage is 65%, which is well under their effort in the first test. New Zealand shooting at 77. Both sides down from the brilliant performance they put out in the first test, but uh, plenty more pressure from the defenders. Van Dijk will surely get this. And to make it 11 all with a centre pass to come. A seesawing first quarter that has absolutely flown by. I can't believe there's only a minute and a bit to go. Got a noise from the crowd who didn't like Van Dijk swinging round to the post, wiping the ball across the Australian defender to clear some space. Well, that's his style. And from point-blank range with a great split. High ball to Van Dyke, who really pushes and forces the issue. It's an unnecessary action. It's almost intimidation by the attacking player. I think probably watched once by the umpire, and the second time will probably attract a whistle. Fox, Shin, Fox. Henry too close. 12 ball. What a first quarter. Has composed herself. She's now eight from 11. So as we expected, she's attracting a lot of attention, but just starting to settle and take control. And a couple of penalties, slowing it down. Trying to stop them getting this last goal. Held ball against Wilson. Chatfield. 
to Illich. May not be any more scoring in this first quarter, and we'll be all tied up at the first break. We are indeed. Oh, they each had their turn in the lead, and there's a lot. <laughs> they had a whole match in a quarter there, it felt like. But uh, in Perth, second test, Australia and New Zealand all And Jess Shin to get us underway, hopefully. Illich. <laughs> They do put great pressure over the centre pass, always, the Silver Ferns. Stuck on the transverse line, Australia. Neil makes a good lead out of the circle. Now the black body suits are swarming in defence. They really held up that Australian centre. Avellino making the most of that penalty. Neil, nice split from the Australian attackers. Contact on the ball, penalty On that throw-in. I'm just thinking it's interesting bringing Davu on to a quarter that has Maggie Duplessis uh, I'm officiating at that end because the penalty count really has been quite heavy on the serve of defenders that may well spoil what Ruth Aitken is wanting from Davu. So a missed goal, turnover. And Davu on to Scarlett. Clark, Nickel, Wilson and Clark. Managed to get it to Wilson, wide open, of course. Chatfield. Well, it was always going to happen. That was a very timid feed from Adine Wilson, who's normally a very good feeder, although not with quick hands. Neil. Scarlet defending. Neil shot, blocked. And once Cox had it in her hands, that's when Scarlet gave up the penalty. But the penalty was a little slow coming in. I thought there was actually a bit on the ball on the shot from Neil. 13-12 Australia. Early stage of second quarter. As New Zealand throw one away. Can't afford to. They're looking to keep the series alive. Push it to an all-important third test in Melbourne at uh, Vodafone Arena on Saturday afternoon. You'll see it with us on ABC Sport. Well, the Inspector General in full flight down court has lifted the workload in attack. Janine Illich for playing really hard for Australia, really trying to lift in the absence of Liz Ellis. And Janine, of 43 tests today, uh, finds herself the most experienced Australian on court. Cox playing her 40th, and then it falls right away. Sinan Neal next with 21. So it's a very inexperienced side. <laughs> a happy one. <laughs> Australia, three in a row, and with the pass. Avellino, nice move. Oh, nice pivot. <laughs> Gotten far less space, though, to work in in this test as Wilson hunts one down. They do that so well. Close down the space with that zone defence. You can see Timapara Clark is really trying to get that quick ball happening into the circle, but the options aren't always there. And at that moment, she needed Wilson to put another offer in so the ball could be swung, but it really froze. Tahuna. Oh, smartly off to Van Dijk. The village was looking to hold and time the jump. And New Zealand get it back to one. Three minutes gone, second quarter in Perth. And Gerard chalking up the penalty. She's got four. Illich six, Chatfield seven. Australia 23 penalties to 19 overall. Good pressure outside the circle over the feed. Gives the, the intercept up for Chatfield. Oh, Shin. Scary. Oh. Scary but effective. Two. Now I'd suggest this ball that goes Daddy's over Davu would not have gone over Scarlet. Uh, Davu not as quick and not quite the elevation. And she read it well but just wasn't quick enough to react. Oh, another ambitious ball. So both teams really trying to crack it open but it's not quite there yet. They're going to have to work it out bit by bit. Step by step. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get called for that, of course. <laughs> Clark, down goes Illich, makes it a little easier. Oh, that's better speed and a nice swing from the New Zealand forward line. The angle's starting to come into their play. It's far superior from the first test from New Zealand, but is it enough? One shot tonight from Irene Van Dyke, who's now 10 from 14. New Zealand. That's, that's a miss. New Zealand sitting Jodie Tahuna right back from the centre pass to give a lot of room to Wilson and they're dragging it in from the back of the centre. Clark. Oh, and that incredible elevation and stretch from Van Dyke to reach is just a killer if you're a defender. 15 all. Holding on grimly. Gerard. Great athletic take. Open to Sin and Neil. I was wondering whether they were going to side it, but Gerard with good vision to the post. Oh. 
Falling Careful. on the ball. Can't do that. Yeah, can't do that. That was a delayed response from Maggie de Plessis. She really fell on the ball in the first place. Yeah. Catherine Cox in desperation dives on it, which is your instinct, but against the rule. Again, Temapara Clark held up from the quick release. This time, Wilson does come to the rescue. Swipe from Gerard. No call from the umpire. I think Clark was hard done by there. No, it may not matter. Great uh, switch from uh, Chatfield and Illich, but Illich's boots got stuck on the floor. She just missed uh, the lead. And New Zealand with the lead of one and chance to take it to two. They scored the last three. Australia was looking for four in a row. Costly turnover and New Zealand haven't looked back. So it's coming in spurts for both teams in the second test. And Tahuna. Oh, out of come. Well, that's one way to score. Well, that's where the space is, and that's what shooters are taught to do. Use that space off the baseline. Offside called, called against Gerard. Nickel, Clark. Catherine Cox and Van Dyke, as we would expect, locked in a shooting battle as Wilson hits the deck. Quite hard, too. And the clash with Illich, I think. Down she went and uh, shocked as much as anything. I think she'll be okay. Adine Wilson, 44th cap today. Nairing Van Dyke getting a 51st. And uh, tomorrow night, a uh, special moment on ABC television. The big picture, the last great amateurs featuring Magda Shabonsky as Sharon for Kath and Kim. And the story of Melbourne Phoenix and the story of elite sport played by amateurs doing it for the love of the game and not much else and it'll be great viewing tomorrow night hope you can join us on abc at 8 30. looks like the australians might use this time out for a change yes it appears they've made substitutions megan anderson i can see is patching up at goal attack and that's the only one i can notice at the moment but can i get my head in that huddle <laughs> no, no. oh interesting it's only been a two or three minutes that New Zealand have enjoyed this little dominance, but uh, Norma Plummer wants to give it a try. So Anderson on for Sin and Neal, six minutes into the second quarter. So Neal on five from ten. Yeah, the accuracy's not quite there from Neal, but she's had some good defence over the shots. Well, both goal attacks have been playing a service role to the shooters, and we were mentioning as Wilson went down this shooting duel between Cox and Van Dyke. Cox shooting at 77%, Van Dyke at 76%. So still the uh, argument will continue about the world's best. Chance for six in a row for the Silver Ferns. Can break this open. They lead it by three. Oh, Adelina. Adelina. And I know well the Australians have been doing some work with hands over the ball, really pressuring the feeds. This is where they've been getting a bit caught. Shin. Anderson into the game. Adelino gets a taste of the floor. Contact against Davu. Davu smacks the hands together in... Uh, Is she admonishing herself or the umpire? <laughs> mm. Take your pick. And Anderson is into the game on the score sheet. We need a few. Just to get settled Australia. They've changed their lineup. They had five in a row against them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's quite evident that Shin was trying to set the penalty. Nickel trying to block it from the circle edge. Outside, advantage outside. Cox. Anderson made a great move baseline, but uh, yeah, was a good distraction. Great, great switch, though, between the New Zealand defenders. Put Davu back on the base. And well left <laughs> by Chatfield in the end, because Van Dyke had given it up as a lost cause. Well, even the front row of the stands are wondering if it was for them. <laughs> no, it's Gerard. Oh, oh, nice left foot into the stands. Football. Well, if it's deliberate use, uh, it's against the rules. Yeah. Whether that must have been deemed as accidental, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I think there was a bit of Pele in that one. Oh, foot violation. <laughs> Cox, Anderson, Avellino. It was the Avellino anderson cox combination that did so well at this venue at the Nationals just a, a couple of weeks ago for New South Wales. And it's, it's 
Australia has answered with three in a row. Since that little timeout that uh, did more for Australia, it seems, than uh, New Zealand, although it was the Kiwis that called it for the injury. New, Anderson. Ze New Zealand persisting with uh, stacking three across the transverse line to deny Australia that forward centre pass. They're having to come through the back using Gerard and Illich. But they're sorting it out well, the Australians. Anderson leaves it for Avelino. Offside against Avelino. Toe over the line under some uh, duress. Nickel. That's a Wilson. great ball to make some progress through the centre third. And that's a good ball into Van Dyke. It was an area that New Zealand was lacking in the first test, their ability to swing it through that middle area quickly. Oh, that was left elbow to guard off a defender and the other hand to take the ball. Holding against Gerard, Clark has it. Now to Huna, good left hand. Contact against Gerard again, top of the circle. <laughs> A bit of a face massage from Illich from behind. Yeah. Take your pick about which of these uh, blows was the foul from Illich, I'm afraid. Have to do better than that, but, you know, the world's best can do that to you. And she's got the rebound. Tallest player in that circle by some centimetres is Irene Van Dyke. That's 15 from 19 now. Anderson, the shin. Great work from Cox. Came out like a steam train. And now Anderson will use some speed to try and split the defenders. Okay. Throw in Australia. Contact to centre, penalty call. <laughs> and a pat in the back from Clark to Shin. Oh, I've waited a match and a half to see that. Oh, Clark just loves the contest. She just gets carried away with the mission. <laughs> She's the girl that when you say, should you accept her, her hand's already out before you get to the hard part. Well, what's hurting Australia here is their shooting percentage. It's 67. It was in the 80s in the first test. New Zealand's is down also to 74. What's hurting Australia also is the ease with which New Zealand is starting to find Van Dyke now on the move to the post. It's coming in too fast. And the cheerio to Liz Ellis watching, I'm sure, back in Sydney, getting lots of treatment on the ankle and hoping that she can make it to Melbourne for the third test. Yeah, Lizzie well. keep the ice on the ankle, not in your glass. <laughs> Van Dyke. And four in a row for New Zealand and a lead of four. Going back to New Zealand at a rather nasty hour in the morning this match, but I reckon there'll be a lot of Kiwis up watching. I spoke to Liz uh, this afternoon, and um, she's pretty confident that she might be a star in Melbourne, but she's a bit slow to get to the phone, Steve. Yeah, yeah. After you wasn't home. <laughs> no slaves available, I understand. Quick centre pass. Tahuna finds Van Dyke, anchors that left foot. Far more confidence in the Silver Fern camp. Chatfield As lands on the foot and apologises. Oh. <laughs> Flushed, but enjoying it. And suddenly New Zealand have managed more attempts, more possession than Australia. It's only recent in the last few minutes. Until then, Australia had dominated with opportunities. Shin straight to the Cox. Avellino. Oh. First to that one cleanly. And Clark can't dive on the ball. It's another example of that rule that in their enthusiasm they can just forget how it's written. So Cox. And 14 from 17. Yeah, Catherine and uh, Irene both at 82%. Irene though with more opportunity has had 23 attempts at post. Catherine just a 17. Chatfield. Gerard on for Illich. Shin. 224 left in. Oh, what a throw away. Oh, that's it. That is a giveaway. <laughs> Shin just starting to slow down, look a little more tentative as the linking player down court. They really need that cut and drive to come through quickly. All it's doing now is fueling with the confidence of the New Zealand defence. 24 to 20. Good second quarter from New Zealand. They lead it 12 to 10. Sorry, 12 to 8. 
Good work, Avellino. Knew it was on behind the line. <laughs> reset, retake, and advantage moving. Exactly. Bravo infringing even when she was in the out of play position. Well done. Clark, Nicole. Steve, the body control is starting to be lost as the game goes on. Five goal lead for New Zealand. And the centre pass to come. They're breaking this open in the second quarter. The inclusion of Anderson stopped it for a minute or two. Uh, New Zealand have settled beautifully. What a ball into Van Dyke via the floor. Once again, the Australian defensive pair in the circle are exposed. There's not enough work being done ahead of them. It's coming in too quickly. So expect some mid-court changes. Avellino, to Cox, to Shin. Need a couple late in the quarter, Australia. Anderson, Dabu, can't stop that one. Anderson, two from four. Good work over the ball from Gerard. Anderson's got it. Half a minute left. Second quarter. Cox, baseline. Take the shot. And Scarlett will help herself. Clark. Oh, Australia really needed that last goal because this will be a lead of six if they can convert from here. And the turnover. That's not taken where it was asked. And neither side can score in that last dramatic 30 seconds of the second quarter but it was Atleti, chocolate at wing defence Broadbent at goal defence and uh, of course Anderson came on for Sinanil in that uh, second quarter oh, Anderson absolutely wide open and obstruction fortunately uh, for Anderson from Scarlett she was very close to a held ball so underway in the third quarter there's uh, New Zealand Really looking more like the team we expected to, to see in the first test. Tahuna, Broadbent. Now Chatfield just holding position on Van Dyke a little too long then. I know she must stop Van Dyke, but on the release, she had time to get across to that drive from Tahuna, so it's mixing up the job that's difficult. We thought Norma Palmer would make some changes to try and slow down access to, to the New Zealand circle. She's decided to address goal defence, wing defence. Uh, Natasha Chocolate has uh, forced into the kind of wing attack position in, in recent series. So it's her first game at wing defence for Australia. And she'll be pleased to be in that position because that's where she plays for Phoenix. I know it's kind of an ironic situation, isn't it? She's such an outstanding wing defence, but Australia in trying to hunt for a mid-court, utilise her speed and finesse at the other end. Another three in a row for New Zealand and they are breaking this open big style. Yeah, that ball just too good. Chatfielder uh, will be beaten on a ball well placed like that one. Wouldn't matter whether it's Chatfield or Illich or Ellis. Once that ball is placed well beyond the reach of Van Dyke, it's uh, too hard for any of them in a one-on-one -on -one contest. Holding ball keeper, Patricia. And holding in the circle against uh, Dabu, that was as well because the ball for Shin was not well placed. Anderson steps back to go forward and uh, so it goes. Everything's a little more hesitant from Australia's performance really since quarter time. Well, a three-second call should have come out then. In fairness, probably in that grey stretch across the line of the centre circle, which is where the responsibilities of the umpires on court cross over. Wilson. Nice play. To Tahuna, baseline. Oh! And yeah, it was a, that's a big contact from Broadbent on Van Dyke. Just about had her in the full headlock. It's difficult coming from the bench to make the adjustment, and you see sometimes the moves are coming from the defenders out of passion rather than, or as Avelina dives in under it, well, rather Avelina than getting off footing. the body. And the Australian defenders are caught in the circle when it's a closed circle situation, a little too tight on the body. Shin offside, leaping the ball, and it's looking very much a silver 
Fern performance here. Adelina makes the move, but just slips uh, as the ball's delivered. New Zealand had it by eight. Great work, Anderson. Good pressure over. Chin arrives to back up. Adelino to the corner. Turnover's really hurting. Australia just 12 to New Zealand's 14. But New Zealand with 10 rebounds to five. So they're getting good possession. To Huna. To Clark. You could see on that ball from Clark, it appeared that it was almost a misplaced pass. What she was trying to do was turn to Huna to get the drive back to the post, but she couldn't talk her into it. Shin. Garlett running shoulder to shoulder with Anderson. Elbow to elbow, rib to rib. Chocolate gets set. Shin. Oh. Got the ball back from by the Kiwi hand to Wilson. Oh, against the ring. Even that's uh, conspiring against the Australians at the moment. And New Zealand looking now for a 10-goal lead if they can convert this possession. Australia led by 12 during the second quarter of the first test. So they're hunting for one of the biggest leads of the series so far. Australia's doing. Clark. Scarlett. Had a great match. Wilson. Oh, Tahuna gets the scrappy ball and will convert. He's had a fine gun. Well, Australia would like to start this quarter again. It's a 7-2 quarter so far for New Zealand. It's for the last four, and they've got that 10-goal lead and possession. <laughs> Avellino's on court with just one shoe. when she wants to clear the defender off her quickly was just not tolerated by Maggie de Plessy who said, no, you must not push the ball at the girl. And Avellino wants some attention to the left ankle. Now, any truth that she took that shoe off to store for time or not? Uh, we'll see. There'll be a substitution coming as well. I think uh, there might have been a message via the shoe phone. Yeah, <laughs> good, <laughs> good call. Well... Uh, more netball this week on ABC Sport. Not just the third test, but uh, tomorrow, the last great amateurs featuring Melbourne Phoenix and uh, narrated by Magda Zhabonski and the persona of Sharon from Kath and Kim. 8.30, the big picture tomorrow night. And the big picture here is that New Zealand have uh, got Australia where they want them. Ten goals down. And Norma Plummer forced to make a lot of changes. Doesn't help your uh, fluency any. No, I think your point uh, was a, a valid one. They've lost the rhythm uh, in stringing it down court in this third quarter. It's going to be hard to re-establish because New Zealand are building strength to strength in confidence. Alex Hodge, though, um, has a lot of speed and it'll be something new for Nicola to think on. Obstruction by the fans. Whoa, Billy Davu nearly ends up in the Australian bench. It's Hodge at wing attack, who was... Um, out of the uh, the squad of 12 for the first test, and as Norma Plummer suggested she would, she would the other players a go, and Hodge is in. She was the player brought in after the injury to Alice. But not as keeper. <laughs> no, certainly not, yeah. We don't expect to see her there. Shin to Cox. And Anderson. Oh, oh, distance, she was about four feet back. Oh, it's a tough one on Darby. I think the arms may have been raised in getting back that far. Okay, they get a couple. And get the lead under 10. Well, Australia will have to take a leap out of New Zealand's book when they will as far as 12 down in the first test and forward it back to only lose by five. Well done, Chatfield, to initiate that turnover. And 
more of that. Well, that's good, tough work, and surely there's the same spirit and commitment in the Aussie camp as there was in the Silver Fern. Chocolate, Chatfield. And Van Dyke working hard in defence, good to see. And they're looking for that cut and drive through the midcourt, and Hodge is working the legs furiously. <laughs> good speed from Hodge. Cox. Great shooting under pressure. They are very hard goals to shoot. It was a good range shot. They desperately need them in. Well done from the acting captain. Oh, Davu, oh, please. Lord. Oh, goodness me. What an absolute blatant penalty. I, that's one of the worst I've seen. And she comes up with a ball. Well, I'm sorry, but that kind of action is beneath the player on international netball court. I mean, it's... Yeah. And it's not to be laughed at as... Uh, the as settle. having uh, no smile can counter that. That was just uh, unskillful. Watch, watch the arm of Dabu come around Catherine Cox. Uh, Let's see it there. Well, I'm floored. I'm speechless on that one. And Chocolate takes a spill at the other end. Australia have scored the last four. As we see Chocolate hit the deck. Both, both, both out of play. Alison Broadbent just moving off the mark before the release of ball, so it'll be reset. So Australia's run of four halted, but they've got it back to seven. Hodge is starting to make some ground off the line on the centre pass, so it's giving Australia that forward flow again. So it's uh, it's mixing it up again for Australia. In fact, was against Tahuna. Contact against what? Well, she well, said, she goal, said attack. goal attack, but I'm not sure that it's what she meant, but the girls have ignored her. <laughs> <laughs> well, she knew which way she wanted the penalty to go, I just called out the wrong player. I mean, the players can generally work that out. The umpires have to say and do a lot, and uh, sometimes it's the body language that they respond to. Oh, Anderson, how oh. did you get away with that? I admire the hunt, but the timing was out, and that was a contact against goal attack. But look at it. She's at the other end of the court after the drive. Great saving. It was late, as you can see, but it just was uh, not picked up by the Plessy and yeah. played on beautifully. And Scarlett has asked for the timeout, but uh, Australia on a bit of a run here. They've got it back to five. Remember, it was ten. Well, we asked for some ticker and some heart from the Australian line, and they've replied. Down. Yeah, well, that happens. And uh, so a, uh, an a strategic injury timeout. <laughs> Scarlett gets some attention to the knee. So the crowd is very close in this uh, this venue, Annie. I don't think there was anyone that missed what Davu was up to down this right hand end as we look at it, and uh, but it's it's been what we've seen through recent Australian New Zealand matches and it's it, it is an issue for netball if it's going to be played like that a lot of people don't mind it but that's not what the rules are saying now I just think ethically it's beneath the skill level of these two teams I, we've seen it of course on international court but it's from the less skilled nations that kind of stuff doesn't happen between Australia and New Zealand it was just a very amateurish uh, move from someone beaten to the ball so that's Cheryl Scanlon is on at goal defence as now it's New Zealand who's looking to shore up that end. Extraordinary number of uh, substitutions having to be made. As both coaches look for the winning edge. The series is on the line here for New Zealand. They've got to win this one to have a chance. Nice drive and offload from Shin and the connection between Anderson and Cox starting to develop. Only with the last three on the trot. Here come the Aussies. Tahuna to the corner. Goalkeeper, goal defensive. Van Dyke hasn't had a shot for a while. And Van Dyke on 25 from 30. Tahuna 10 from 14. Oh, Anderson on the stretch. Hodge on the fly. 
That's what they're, they're looking for from her, her great pace. Well, Hodge has been handy since she's come on. It's been a great interchange from the bench. Avelino started the game well, great touch with the ball, but was just starting to lose a bit of speed on the take and uh, not able to get uh, the high take. Anderson, long range shot from her. And Dadu, an uncontested rebound with um, <laughs> Cox cuddling the post. Well, I was going to say, Cox was still unwrapping herself from the plastic. And possession goes to New Zealand. Fair enough, too. Possession. Well, and away it goes. <laughs> Some quizzical looks from the players. Chocolate. Oh, high risk pass to Broadbent. Uh, Tahuna out of play. It's been quite an exhaustive match. I think the umpires are, aren't tiring, but there's been a great volume of words and action, and they're even struggling to get the words out now. It's exhausting for them. They've got so much to watch and call and uh, to endure sometimes from the crowd. Great pressure shot. Megan Anderson, her eighth of the match, just three misses. Four to go in the third quarter, and Australia have clawed back from 10 down. New Zealand are with a lead of five, and the attempts are level. The well, shooting percentage still favouring New Zealand, though. Jody Tahuna falling clumsily after the contest over oh. chocolate. Oh, there must be some uh, moisture on the floor there because Hodge is just... Uh, I think it's the pride that's injured, not the body as she collapses <laughs> giggling. Well, more flexible than most of us because the legs went every which way at um, disconcerting angles. Here we go. The floor does need a wipe. 3.24 left in the third. It was 26.21 at half time. So 10 each in this third quarter. Anderson looking for help. And they both appeal for it. As they know the umpires are a little susceptible to that tactic, Annie. Well, I, I'm glad the umpires are standing their ground. I remember the days of old where there'd be a quiet, I've got it under control, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Issued to the players. I kind of like that communication between them. Great timing, great take. Clumsy challenge. Tahuna steps off to Clark. Strong take uh, in the end from Van Dyke. Yeah, good timing, nice fluency in the New Zealand circle. Clark instrumental in orchestrating that one. Australia's fought hard to get back within five. They need to convert all possessions now. Any turnover will hurt. Oh, Shin, that's a replay. Well, she took a bit from Davu. She ran across the top of the circle and Davu gave her a little bit of a touch on the way through. And it put her off balance on the take. Anderson going the right at 9 from 12. Cox 19 from 24. Sinan Neal out of the game on 5 from 10, having started at goal attack. Tahuna, long range shot for her. Uh, opts not to take it. And Van Dyke on 85%. Oh, Anderson. Well, I think she went... Uh pedal to the metal on that knowing that she had the support of chocolate watching and that she could just offload if needed Cox. there's some brilliant work from both teams at the moment i'll tell you what you see there is an incredible speed from Catherine cox for such a tall girl yeah, she's a powerful athlete take it back Where the last 90 seconds third quarter no one wants to give up possession here Tahuna to the corner Defense penalty pass. Contact against Chocolate. Wilson. Via Tahuna to Van Dyke. Oh! Equal number of attempts, Australia, Contact New Zealand, and, and uh, that's evened out across the match. Goal percentage favours New Zealand, who are the more accurate of the two. Test number two. A few boos for Maggie Duplessis, or was it for Alison Broadbent from the Kiwis down that end? Take your pick. <laughs> Just if looking at. Uh, the rebounding stat it favors New Zealand and I would suggest it's through Van Dyke her tally on the rebound uh, 
is seven. Oh, she's seven the leading rebounder in the game by double. No, one, no one's even got three. Well, that's giving herself or Tahuna away because one of them must be missing if she's rebounding. <laughs> Penalties very even in this match, and that wasn't the case. It was almost two to one early in test number one. It evened out a bit across the first test, but uh, very even in this one. Clark, last few seconds. Third quarter, Australians trying desperately to deny New Zealand one last goal. Oh, Van Dyke backing into Chatfield. It's picked up brilliantly by Maggie DePresti. Turnover for Australia. It's now advanced. And I doubt that they can get it down the court in time. It'll be three-quarter time uh, with Australia trailing by four. And that's a great call. The advantage call then allows Australia the chance to get it down. Had she set that penalty when Wilson deliberately put the arms up, it would have given them no chance. So really smart umpiring by Johnson Hurley. The lead failure to win it in two. And underway, last quarter. And in Perth, Hodge. And immediately a turnover against Australia. Didn't see many late in that third quarter. Shin. Oh, well read, Jess Shin, in front of the home crowd. And possession given to Australia. And a good attempt from Leslie Nickel. It's the kind of intensity you can expect for the remainder of the match. Anderson shot so well. And it's Australia's throw in. It must have come off Davu. Miss Anderson, I thought, really stood up in that third quarter, Annie, when Australia had the ball. She was going to make sure she didn't miss when they couldn't find Cox. Absolutely. We've come to expect her tenacity in the court part, but what she gave then was responsibility to shoot the goal and did it so well, particularly with Cox under so much pressure. Tahuna. Gee, they could have got it to uh, Van Dyke. They have now. Retreats on that anchored left foot. And New Zealand first to score in the last quarter. And with the centre pass, Nickel. New Zealand with slightly superior shooting accuracy still. They're at 80%. Australia averaging 71. Yeah, contact against Shin and the chase for the ball. Clark just had better position. And the only way Shin was going to beat it to it was uh, somewhat illegally. Tahuna. Big miss from Tahuna. Air ball. <laughs> Chocolate. Oh, Jess Shin, great cut and dry through the midcourt. And needs to keep going with it so she can hit the circle edge. I think she held off then to give the shooter some room. Oh, on the ball. There's an out. That amazed me. It's either a three-second call on Anderson or it's a contact on the ball by New Zealand. Anyway, it's a timeout being called uh, by Jody Tahuna. Wants some attention to the left ankle. I don't think we could suggest this was a strategic one because uh, things are pretty much status quo. Last quarter, a goal apiece. I don't know if the arse would be too effective through the shoe and the ankle guard. She wants to get the, uh, the laces reset. Gives Ruth Aitken a chance to come out and say something, but Norma Plummer's taking the same opportunity. Oh, isn't the crowd enjoying this, Annie? Well, why not? They're just being treated to a wonderful contest. And there's been so much atmosphere. Yeah. Really, Western Australia have hosted this beautifully. They've uh, given the crowd a lot of avenues to involve themselves before the game and really identify who they're barracking for, and they've just run with it. Irene Van Dyke, the only New Zealand player who would have uh, experienced this venue, and that was as a South African. And uh, now, can she spearhead New Zealand to a series levelling win here? Shin with the centre pass. <laughs> He's got it. No, 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 it's the other way, Wilson. <laughs> she thought she had it. Comes up smiling. I actually think it was the other way. Yeah, I, well. I can understand Wilson running off thinking uh, it was going to go their way, but uh, she's fairly gracious about conceding defeat. <laughs> yeah. A lawyer? They've got a doctor, a lawyer and a nurse. So, you know, if it comes oh, to blows, I've got the injury sorted and the court case that follows. 
So that kind of covers some of the actions Zabu has taken then in the game. <laughs> Clark, so quick. Chin offside. Offside. And this is another break, uh, turnover. That, uh, if New Zealand can convert. They should have the five and they should have the centre pass if my memory's right. Dillon by five and with possession. Wilson to Van Dyke. Under oh. 12 minutes left. Ali Broadman makes a valiant effort to go straight up to stop the cross court ball. Just misses it by a half a little fingernail. Well, to her, a great use of the circle. Penalty. And it's against Van Dyke. What was she up to, Annie? Use of elbows and backing off the defenders to give herself some room. And Tahuna also pushing the ball through the defender to try and make the forward move. But it went against Van Dyke. Five penalties against Irene. And seven in the first test. Uh, and that's a little warning, just to be careful, to Irene Van Dyke, who put her arms out to stop Natasha Chocolate's uh, drive and basically gave her a little bit of a hook across the neck. Oh, Cox, two dummies left and right. Shot fake. <laughs> Pass fake. Cox. <laughs> Needs that to go. Oh, and Davu picks up the rebound off the back of Scanlon. Got to sink those when you're trailing by five. Oh, baby, that's out. It's a bit to up and down the court at the moment. Both coaches uh, turn them a little greyer. One's up on shooter. Penalty. <laughs> then Dyke gets up. And it was against her. That, that hurts a little more. You're the one that takes the fall, but you were the guilty party. Chocolate. Oh, Hodge. Cox. Working ever so hard. Not this sure is... why that was dished off. Anderson was in good range then, but it's a delicate touch on the rebound. Try again from the same range. Shorter still. And the shooting has just gone off for Australia when they couldn't afford it. The captain will be disappointed in the self. Those last two passages of play needed uh, to have goals scored they'd have been two goals more on the board it's a crucial miss for Van Dyke gets this one by six less than ten to go it's a lot to haul in Shin there is help. so much speed on the court they're having to work so hard to get the ball should have been a decision made then Penalty against Chocolate. Not set. Oh, not, not set. set. Not taken beside the player out of play. <laughs> Negative Chocolate. Pepsi seemed to take delight in giving it. Uh, Chocolate had the tongue in the cheek. Oh, I'll take that. It's uh, a soft turnover, but it's a new rule. Oh, oh. A dangerous ball, but Cox almost up for it. And she, she takes heaps then in trying to get that ball. Cannot buy a goal at the moment, Catherine Cox. And Davu's getting all the rebounds. So Cox has missed four in a row and a shooting percentage is under 70. And it was 90 in the first test. Clark. Van Dyke. She couldn't get her feet around in time. She needed to get around and then up at the ball, but she was just caught behind that span that Van Dyke can put out. This run of three could be the clincher for New Zealand. We'll be going to a live third test in Melbourne. Oh, late, clumsy challenge from Chocolate on Wilson. He doesn't bat an eyelid. Holding it against Chocolate. And Australia seems to have taken on the attitude they'll do whatever they have to. But, uh, it's a bit untidy. There's a lot of desperation out there, and it's probably not the quality they need. Top of the circle, well down to Wilson, opens it up for Tahuna. Well, okay. ironically, the screen's offered by Van Dyke and the ball taken by Tahuna, which is normally the reverse, and Anderson calls time. And New Zealand scoring four in a row, not quite halfway through the last quarter, and New Zealand up by eight. It is painful. For the Aussies, as uh, Wayne Rogers applies a bit of assistance. Anderson. 
majority of Kiwis lending support to the Silver Ferns got their noses well in front then. Just wonder whether anything will happen. Uh, obviously the accuracy has fallen off in the last couple of minutes. It'll be a great call to uh, make the change. But certainly Norma Plummer is chatting. It's not on our screen, but chatting very specifically with our acting captain. And Catherine Cox probably doesn't need to chat. She's well aware that she needs to be sinking those goals for Australia. The coaches trying to make themselves heard in a venue like this. If it's not the crowd, it's the music. But you've got to back the Kiwis in from here. Eight up with eight to go. <laughs> Just shit his face the wrong way. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to love her. <laughs> uh, no. Oh, I don't know that uh, Darby got a hand on that. No. A bit of showmanship uh, in the... I think she knew coming out was too far and didn't even want to. No. But the numpires were looking at each other, they weren't sure. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. It's a 5 1 last quarter, a low scoring last term. Favouring New Zealand. Tahuna. Smart work by oh. Clark, who let Tahuna know that there were centimetres behind and just keeps shuffling back. And with the centre pass, looking for a lead of 10. The one or two quiet uh, patches in the match, New Zealand, but doing the business now. Well, that ball really hurt. It really just showed uh, dominance at this point in the match and uh, really was a statement that they mean to claim this second test. Six in a row in the middle of the last quarter of a tight game. Decisive passage. Brilliant work from Wilson. And this is the real New Zealand we're seeing. We wondered where they were in the first half of the first test. And by that stage, they'd let it go. Well, we knew they were missing players and they hadn't risen uh, to replace those. But what's disappointing for Australia is when they had a very good showing, the feeling will be that they've lost so much ground and they'll go into the third test feeling underneath it. They're at the wrong end of the equation. Biggest lead of the match coming up for New Zealand. As Van Dyke gets her 35th goal at 85%. Well, she averages about 39 a match. Well, not that's pretty well where she sits, around the 39-40 goal mark. And if you can manage that against Australia, you certainly are making a statement. Now, Nickel is uh, slowing down the Australian uh, fast break. Broadbent, Shin. Australia did have it back to four at one stage, but it's all coming uh, seriously unglued now under the pressure of uh, New Zealand. Oh, Irene on the juggle. Can't do it. Signal being given by Wilson about uh, one of his centre court presses on it. Yeah, packing the middle, just making it a little tougher for Australia, who have, have lost their timing without the mid-court press. And in 10 minutes of the last quarter, that's just Australia's second goal. Huge defensive effort from New Zealand in the last quarter when it matters. Anderson. Contact, Darby, she's out. Oh. Anderson knew when that left to hand that was falling short. Well, three attempts to get one. And just uses up valuable seconds and... Uh, in chase mode great ball tahuna really learning to wait that pass to van dyke and she's making it easy for her teammate 58 attempts all coming into that last one 59 58 but a lead of 10 again underscoring the uh, wonderful accuracy of van dyke so a couple of contrasting experiences for irene van dyke at this venue annie across about 10 years <laughs> Another miss for Kath Cox, ringing out. Contact against Hodge. Nickel for making sure she's in the right spot this time. As uh, Wilson and Tahuna went for the same ball. 
Good challenge by Chatfield, who used the outside arm, came around pretty clean, tried to hold a line, and she got the nod from Johnson Hurley. Not a lot of run left in some of the Australian legs. Well, they're having to re-offer so much around the circle to try and get access to the shooters. It's really coming at a tough time in the game. Three and a half to go. New Zealand should be able to see it home safely. They've built a good lead in this last quarter. Having only been up uh, by four at three-quarter time. Well, that was on the arm, I'm sure, from Chatfield, denying Van Dyke the shot. It's a little willing. Chatfield. Not enough time, really, for Australia, but they'll fight it out. Having made a disastrous start to this last quarter, Anderson drives into the circle. Shin. Garbu. Oh, I know. That hits, uh, that puts him straight on the edge. It's about a two-meter span, foot to foot, isn't it? We were discussing that earlier in the day, weren't we? Were trying, to, trying to work out what that split is worth, whether it's a meter and a half, but that was about two. But it had seemed like five if you were the opposing defender. She is able to take so many of those shots from close range because of that split. As Hodge gets an unfortunate replay, but the right call's made. Now this final quarter is not 15 minutes of netball that the Australians will want to revisit. Push it out to 11 now, Van Dyke. And you can bank on her doing that. She'll be pushing for 40 goals before match end. They've got the centre pass. Ali Broadbent's been looking for that ball. Contact against Nickel, who's seen out the game pretty well, having been subbed in Sydney. Broadbent to Hodge. Cox to Anderson. Contact. Anderson forced to go top of the circle. Garbu. Maybe a replay as well. They're not seeing that way. Clark. 90 seconds left. New Zealand are going to do it. Forces to a live one in Melbourne. And that uh, adds a bit of spice to the Victorian netball fans as they gather at Vodafone Arena on Saturday. And that's where they go. The question is, with or without Lizzie Ellis? Hodge. I know Norma won't force her on court if it's going to risk the long-term prospect of a skipper. That was great play. That'll be a nice one for the Australian girls to hold on to. But they've been few and far between in this last segment. Shindu Anderson to Cox. Oh, Anderson, front to front with... Emma Para Clark, then she finds her way to the post. The Australian shooters having to rely too much on using each other in these final stages rather than a support from outside the circle. Clark, got to uh, admire the way New Zealand have played this last quarter. A few goals for Australia in the junk minutes at the end uh, when the contest has been decided. Last 30 seconds, Perth crowd have loved it, especially the resident Kiwis, and there's plenty of them. Offside against uh, Clark. Oh. Cox rolls away. An obstruction against Arbu. Irene Van Dyke, player of the match. Full time. One last shot for Anderson as it's a penalty. Now it's shooting practice to get it back to eight, and she's done that. But an emphatic return to form for the Kiwis. Those folks are happy, and they've given great support to their team. They needed it coming from one down, but